Um, I'm Leslie Zebrowitz. I'm a professor of psychology and Manuel Yellen professor of social relations at Brandeis University. Um, much of my research has been motivated by my, cur my curiosity regarding why we judge people by their appearance. Um, this is a question that had that's important because it turns out that appearance does have significant social consequences in many domains, ranging from occupational outcomes, political outcomes, even in the courtroom. Um, when I began this work um, more than 35 years ago, there was only sporadic attention to first impressions from faces. And um, what my work has added to that is a theoretical explanation for why we judge people by their appearance and also some research that supports that explanation. I reason that um, the tendency to judge a book by its cover may have some um, shared adaptive underpinnings because it turns out that our first impressions from faces are consensual. And in fact, um, faces do provide us with information that can guide adaptive behaviors. For example, faces tell us a person's age, a person's physical fitness, a person's emotional state. And based on this, I hypothesized that our first impressions of traits from faces um, are an overgeneralization of adaptive responses to the qualities that faces actually reveal. So in baby face overgeneralization, adaptive responses to the um, need for protection of babies is overgeneralized to people whose faces merely resemble a baby's face. And our research has supported this hypothesis, showing that more childlike traits are attributed to people whose faces are rated as more baby-faced or are determined by machine learning to actually show more structural resemblance to faces of babies. So as a consequence, um, Trait impressions that are accurate when you're judging a baby, like naive and physically weak, are attributed to people whose faces merely resemble a baby. We found that this baby face overgeneralization effect is very widespread. It's shown for faces of all ages. It's shown for faces of many races and ethnicities. It's even shown when people are forming impressions of animal faces. In addition, it's shown from an early age, and it's shown by people from many cultures, including a, an, a, a socially isolated culture um, in the Bolivian Amazon that has not really had exposure to a lot of outside influences, which supports the idea that this is some um, evolutionary adaptive mechanism. In anomalous face overgeneralization, Adaptive responses to people who have disease or faulty genes are overgeneralized to unattractive people whose faces merely resemble those of people who are unfit. And research supporting this hypothesis has shown that um, faces that machine learning finds to be more similar to faces of people who have genetic anomalies uh, are perceived to be less healthy, less intelligent, less physically strong, as well as less attractive um, than people whose faces show less resemblance to those with genetic anomalies. It's important to note that the people in this study whose faces the machine learning found to show more resemblance to anomalous faces actually were no different in intelligence or in health from the people whose faces showed less resemblance. So this supports the idea that this is an overgeneralization of responses to, that may be adaptive when you're judging people who are, um, have some kind of genetic anomaly, um, but um, are overgeneralized to people whose faces merely resemble them. We've also found support for um, emotion face overgeneralization, where, people, where responses that are adaptive when you're forming impressions of people with certain emotion expressions are overgeneralized to people whose neutral faces resemble that emotion, according to machine learning and, and other methods. So I would say that it's, it's not fair, but facial appearance does matter. And our research has demonstrated that 
The first impressions we form of faces um, reflect the overgeneralization of responses to faces that vary in age or fitness or emotional state. Um, we're not really aware of these influences on our impressions, which makes it hard to control them. And um, it's my hope that um, making people more aware of this phenomenon will ameliorate some of the negative effects that facial appearance has in the classroom, in occupational settings, um, in political outcomes, and even in the courtroom.